Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, uh, Josh Paduska, who is the Chief Data Scientist at Domino Data. Uh, Josh, could you please make your turning your video on and sharing your presentation? Uh, without any further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Josh, for your talk entitled Monitoring Models at Scale. I'll be here if you need anything. Great. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's great to be with you today. Um, as was just said, I'm Josh Podeska, the Chief Data Scientist at Domino Data Lab. Been in the industry about 20 years. Um, I'm very excited to share this presentation with you today. Monitoring models is near and dear to my heart. When I first had experience with putting models into production um, a couple of decades ago, it became apparently clear to me at that time that uh, we need to do a much better job than we're already doing at monitoring these models and avoiding the risk that is inherent with them. Um, and it's been surprising to me how slow the industry has been over these uh, last several years, uh, you know, a couple of decades to really adopt a more aggressive stance on model monitoring. Um, I'm pleased to see more vendors of late offering solutions in this realm and some more um, talks like this one, they're gonna cover best practices for doing this important uh, component of the data science lifecycle. So a quick slide on, uh, just one slide on who Domino is. So Domino was founded in 2013. Uh, Domino created the data science platform category. And basically what Domino seeks to do is to be the system of record for enterprise data science. So think DevOps challenges, think model ops challenges, and along the way, think collaboration, no institutional knowledge management, um, model lineage, um, reproducibility. Domino is a system of record that handles all of that. Um, recognized as an industry leader, for example, by Gartner down below, uh, which says uh, Domino, cites Domino as an industrial strength option for enterprises that truly helps data science teams orchestrate and streamline the ML workflow. Keeping on the enterprise theme, Domino is in 20% of the Fortune 100, as uh, and a few of those logos are on this slide here. So getting into the fun stuff, uh, model, what we're gonna cover today. Uh, we're gonna cover a foundation of model risk. We're gonna talk next about barriers to um, monitoring models at scale. And then we're gonna dive into a framework that we at Domino have put together and hold as a necessary uh, set of requirements for effectively instituting an organizational enterprise-wide model monitoring initiative. Uh, and such an initiative, in my opinion, is long overdue. And some organizations have embarked on this, uh, but they have run into the, some of those barriers that we'll discuss and we'll highlight. Uh, and other organizations have, have embarked on it, but have not um, done so abiding by all the framework principles. And so there are still holes and gaps in their approach, which leaves them exposed to really considerable risk that comes uh, along with predictive models that are running in deployment unchecked. And finally, we will end with an example of model monitoring at scale. So let's start by talking about model risk. And to do so, let's talk about what an, a model is. It, at the heart of data science is this innocuous sounding thing that is a model. And we know that the most successful companies in the world run their businesses on these things called models. Examples include Netflix, famously for the recommendation engine and many other uh, applications of machine learning models. Coca-Cola uh, with perhaps less famously their distribution and production of orange juice, uh, taking into account a complex array of inputs that uh, many are not familiar with this story, but it's an interesting one. And insurance companies like Allstate um, looking at being able to give claims estimates based on pictures and images of damage reports. Each of these examples speaks to two fundamental principles of the advantages of running your business on models. And then subsequently, we'll talk about monitoring those models. First is that these models provide a breakthrough of new revenue streams allow these businesses to break into new markets and create new products. And secondly, and this arguably is the place where model monitoring occurs or is needed more so, 
And that's in the operational efficiencies that give a compounding incremental improvement to everything that the business does. Several years ago, Jeff Bezos in one of his annual letters to shareholders uh, mentioned this two-pronged benefits of a model of basing your business on models. In the first paragraph there, he talks about how some of their machine learning efforts are highly visible. Uh, the Alexa AI assistant, uh, prime delivery drones, um, Amazon Go convenience stores. But then he spent a while talking about some of the underlying beneath the surface advantages of machine learning at Amazon. Um, product search, product recommendations, merchandising placements, fraud detection, and more. It's often in those operational uh, production systems where data science models are um, are working, interacting with parts of the business every day. That's where there's sometimes unknown but substantial risk if we're not monitoring those models. Uh, McKinsey did a study a few years ago and found that 20% of the companies they interviewed were investing heavily in AI. And out of those 20%, they realized about a 10% uh, profit margin delta to the companies that were not investing in AI. So putting all this together, you, I think it's very safe to say, and I be believe that most of you would agree with this statement, that companies that don't run their business on models face an existential threat. And today, as we're talking about model monitoring, I think I can modify one word in this sentence and say that companies that do run their business on models also face an existential threat if they're not monitoring those models and have a holistic and complete framework in place to do so. Why is why does this risk why why is there this risk why is it apparent why why does it exist in um, in production models because realities change um, and models will degrade over time financial markets for example will shift uh, consumer tastes will change over time IoT processes will evolve and data pipelines as you probably know all too well will break or change. Each of these examples of changes to underlying assumptions about how these predictive models are gonna work in the wild lead us to the conclusion that models, model issues must be detected early before they cause material impact to the business. One example of this is uh, a report from a local, from a, a global insurance company recently where they found uh, in an upstream data pipeline, a breakage uh, in that data pipeline. They didn't find it right away. And this caused fraud detection uh, to make suboptimal predictions, which led to increased claims payments for months. Um, examples like this, and we could cite examples across all industries. Not only do you have a business impact here, but in many cases you have potential for bias creep and for models to start doing things that might be unethical. So being able to monitor these models um, in production is just absolutely critical. So let's jump in to barriers to modeling, to monitoring uh, models at scale. Um, everyone knows that we should be doing this, but what is it that makes this so hard? Why is this taking so long to really take root in our industry? <clears throat> Excuse me. The first thing I'd like to point out is something called that we at Domino call the model myth. This is the misconception that all too often exists in organizations that because models involve code and data, they should be treated the same as software or data. Secondly, in addition to not understanding the probabilistic nature of models, many organizations treat data science as a technical off to the side practice instead of integrating it as an organizational capability. And we feel very passionately at Domino that this is represents an opportunity for organizations to scale data science in ways that are uniquely competitive to their um, to the other their peer companies in their categories. And let me put this slide up and talk for a second about how this looks and how model monitoring and feedback fit into this. So this is the ideal scenario. Uh, off on the left, we have this purple bubble where we have model deployment. 
Uh, we have data scientists, uh, excuse me, model development. We have data scientists inside of this circle doing collaborative research. They have a system of record for data science that allows them to use the tools that they love, that they know and love and to collaborate together. It captures in an automatic way knowledge and progression of their data science project so that they have an institutional knowledge bank that is automatically being built up while they do their work. Because you have this model and project provenance built in to the platform that they're using, when they transition over to model delivery and develop and de deployment, there's a smooth handoff to the validation and review team. And I wanna emphasize while I'm saying this, this is a huge part of model monitoring. Often when, when we think of model monitoring, all we think of is that stuff down at the bottom of the circle, that, that feedback loop. There's a whole lot more to it. If you can, from the, from the initial impetus of the project, start to validate all of the assumptions, um, all of the data, uh, all of the stakeholders, both business and technical metadata, if you will, it makes this process of monitoring models really rich and complete and what we all think should happen when, when we have a model monitoring initiative. So once those models are now in the blue circle off to the right, they're in deployment, um, that is governed by IT. Um, it's, there has oversight and you can see how many models are in production in your organization uh, and across business units. And then you have that monitoring and feedback loop at the bottom, which is where this, the meat of this presentation focuses on. But in that feedback loop, business leaders, analytical executives, um, IT executives and IT professionals, everyone has visibility into that monitoring and feedback loop. Not only is it feeding back into the research, the institutional knowledge, it's also, of course, looking for errors in data pipelines, errors in predictions, and being able to give uh, actionable intelligence based on, on those metrics. So this is, this is uh, where we wanna be. This is where every organization I think would inspire to be. Unfortunately, this right here is usually where organizations are at. Um, off on the left, you've got what we sometimes call the Wild West of desktop data science. Uh, you've got one-off, uh, non-collaborative, uh, no model lineage or provenance happening uh, with, with the siloed research. Um, the handoff to risk and compliance is messy. Handoff to IT can be messy. Uh, IT works in a vacuum, putting these models into production. There often is monitoring going on, but usually it's just utilization and usage metrics um, and kind of up-down signals and not the probabilistic-based um, statistical metrics that we would like to see in a model monitoring um, platform. And down at the bottom, your, your leadership really has no visibility. You, they might be hard pressed to tell you how many models are in production across their organization. Now, when we talk about at scale, we mentioned that, that those two words at scale already a couple of times in this presentation. When you expand this out and you think about all the different business units that exist in an organization, and if they're all working in this kind of wild west fashion and ad hoc production and kind of on their own monitoring. You have different tool sets. You have one group that might like Python and deep learning, another group that might like Python and scikit-learn, another group that does R, and then you have SAS and MATLAB built in there. And there's no system of record. Your centralized system of record, your centralized view of analytics across your organization is, is totally broken. So that's those are some of the barriers to establishing a model monitoring um, effort across an enterprise. So let's look at a framework now. Uh, these are what we at Domino hold as eight um, necessary components for establishing um, such an endeavor. First of all, you need to have a clear model registry and stakeholder visibility. So a single pane of glass that shows ownership of models and where those models live within the business. Uh, second, you need a standardized monitoring of all models. This means across languages, across frameworks, and even across deployments, so on-prem and, and cloud or wherever this might be deployed. Third, you need a flexible data collection system um, to be able to ingest data at different speeds, different frequencies. And then along with that, uh, something that often is not thought of as a curation of retrained data sets. So as you're collecting this data for monitoring the health of models, uh, we can also do smart things based on some of the signals we get in building a 
a uh, data sets that can quickly be, and smartly be used to retrain models when they fall out of accuracy. Fourth, uh, statistical and custom metrics, not just uptime, latency, and utilization. And these metrics will tell us um, the state of the world with regards to um, data drift and ground truth, ideally both for structured and unstructured data. That's going to be the holy grail. The unstructured data, the deep nets, that's a lot harder to do. And as uh, as an industry, I don't think the industry's figured that out yet completely, how to monitor the health of those models, but it's coming and progress is being made. Fifth, uh, scheduled checks and flexible alerting system that integrates with both the resources that you have on hand to respond to these signals, but also with some of the business logic that might be existing in a project, being able to have the flexibility to customize those schedules and those alerts uh, inside of those business parameters. Uh, number six, remediation pipelines and a rich API to integrate into CICD processes. Uh, number seven, this because this is a single pane of glass of all your uh, deployed assets, uh, of course, security enterprise grade security would be of utmost importance, both with um, permissioning, but also with roles and ad administration of this, of this um, system. And lastly, um, and this I think is gonna be coming over maybe I'd say the next 10 years, this will get better and better. Uh, integrated explainable AI, integrated bias checks, ethical checks, um, integration of this model monitoring into your overall model risk management practice, which you might have, especially if you're in the finance industry. And of course, full model lineage. So as I mentioned earlier, integrating the whole story of uh, model monitoring and, and model development into the model monitoring. And what we want is this nice picture here where we have um, all of those business units that are disparate and maybe using different uh, deployments and frameworks and languages, all talking together to a, a centralized system of record. Domino's is a, its aspiration is to be that system of record, um, both for research and for model monitoring. So what does it mean to monitor these models? Uh, of course, we have historical inputs that we've used to train the model. And, and then we have a breadcrumb trail as time goes on of those of those past inputs as they have been fed into the prediction system. And then we have new inputs that are coming in live and we can we should use those to check for input drift. On the prediction side, we have historical predictions uh, from when the model first went live. And then we have the new streaming uh, most recent predictions and we can check those together for output drift. And then of course we have the actual results. This won't work for every model, but where we can get ground truth, uh, we should do some model quality and compare uh, our new predictions to what we've had in the past to make sure that our model is still performing. Because sometimes it's these input drifts and output drifts um, might not catch everything, but if we have ground truth, we can get a better feel for the quality of the model. Uh, on the input drift, ex examples of this could be a sensor getting a firmware upgrade uh, in manufacturing and shifting measurements that could be caught with input drift. Um, the reason for loan, uh, start new business might double. Um, that would probably nullify any assumptions that the model was built upon. So we want to alert for that. Then perhaps something like the average incoming patient weight increases by 19%. Uh, or in other words, the COVID-19 that we're all experiencing in our uh, sedentary lifestyles of late. On the output drift, uh, examples of this might be, hey, we the predicted uh, time between maintenance has increased by 15% on, on these, of these machines on our assembly line. We need to be alerted about that. That might not be... Um, what we would expect. Predicted loan rates um, for default are doubling or the number of shirts we want to sell are, are going way up. So just understanding what, how the when the predictions are changing so we can dive into it and figure out why. And then of course, the, with the ground truth labels, you get all the accuracy metrics that you would know and love so that you can see uh, if predictions are holding up to what we would expect based on uh, the holdout samples that were used when the model was trained. And again, that goes back to that the importance of having that complete story of model lineage and provenance. So let's jump in now um, to an example of monitoring our models at scale. Uh, what I'm gonna show you now are a few screenshots from uh, a Domino model monitor, which is um, a new product from Domino that is now available. We uh, refer to it by the acronym of DMM uh, for Domino model monitor. So first of all, let me draw your attention to the right here with this blue diagram. 
Um, inside of Domino of DMM, um, you have a model registry, you have a health dashboard, and inside of that registry and dashboard, you're looking at data drift, you're looking at both input and output, you're looking at model quality, you have configurable checks and automated alerts. So a lot, um, not all of what we hold is the ideal solution. Uh, we're still working on this and building it out and improving it constantly. But the a lot of what you need to have a successful enterprise-wide um, system for model monitoring is in place today uh, with DMM. And, and importantly, um, with, with Domino capturing the um, lineage and provenance of these models and of the research that went into the models, you have a more complete story for validation, validators and regulators. Um, across the top above that blue image, you've got models built with any technology being fed into mo DMM, models deployed on any uh, models built on any platform. So inside of Domino, on SageMaker, DataRobot, MLflow, all of those models can be tracked by DMM. And then also uh, models deployed at any location, on-prem, in the cloud, um, all that can live within DMM. On the left is the first screenshot I'm showing of DMM. This is the model registry, the dashboard where you have all of the models as rows in this dashboard. You have um, a quick snapshot of data drift and model quality if model quality is available. And then you have some pr basic prediction traffic and you can dive into each of those um, by looking at a particular model. And on the left here, you're looking at some of the data drift metrics. So you see that what the training data looked like, its distribution, the prediction data, its distribution and histograms. You have statistical tests like uh, KL divergence, uh, Wasserstein distance um, and many others. And then you have test conditions that you can set up, thresholds you can set, then you see the latest metric for the most latest run of DMM's model checks. And then in the trend line, you see the historical trend of that statistic. Uh, so we're taking into account the probabilistic nature of these uh, models looking for distribution checks um, and doing some statistical comparisons. And we can see the distribution of those statistics, uh, the trend line of those uh, statistics over time. On the right, you have the model quality report, which if you, again, if you have ground truth labels, you can look at um, your favorite accuracy statistics, RMSE, F1, recall, accuracy, all that stuff. And of course, you need to have the ability to schedule these to run on a schedule and uh, be able to set up alerts uh, and notifications. So um, one of our customers of DMM is Top Danmark. Um, they, uh, their data scientist, Soren Peterson, um, is one of their champions of using DMM internally. And he found that um, these DMM allows them to save significant time um, when that they were previously spending on maintenance and investigation for these uh, models that are critically important to their business. Um, they have a large amount of um, financial risk if they, um, if they start to drift. So it's been a, a great product for them to use. Um, for all of you that attend, attended this uh, presentation today, we will follow up with you and um, send you, if we can, I think we should have your information. And, and uh, if you like, we'll send you a blog uh, on DMM and a white paper that dives deeper. This has only been a 25 minute session, so didn't have a ton of time, uh, deeper into the best practices for monitoring models. And you can go to dominodatalab.com and check out uh, DMM there under the products section and find out more information there as well. We also have a free trial that we're offering of DMM, so you can try it out for free. Okay, great. Again, it didn't have much time. Just wanted to uh, establish the um, the need for model monitoring, uh, that framework that we had at Domino hold as an important foundational principles for monitoring those models in production, and then show you an example with uh, Domino's DMM product. Thanks for your time. If, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them now. Great, fantastic. Thank you, Josh. I think you have a few questions in the chat um, section. Look at that real okay. quick. Let me get out a full screen and stop sharing. I'll check that out. Fantastic. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, what technologies did you use in building DMM? It's built on Kubernetes. Um, and right now we are um, really building out our capabilities on AWS. Uh, so DMM can be deployed, uh, the actual monitoring itself uh, can be deployed on AWS. Um, and, uh, but yeah, it's uh, as, as Domino, as like similar to Domino, it's built on Kubernetes. Um, 
to be able to handle that that framework. Great, fantastic. Thank you so much, Josh. I hope you all enjoy it and please make your way to the next session and take one-on-one -on -one meetings in the networking section. Thank you again, Josh.